Next Level Sound is home to the modern music producer. To learn more about Next Level Sound's online music production courses, please visit nextlevelsound.com. Enjoy. So, so Pi says, if, if you're louder, then I think you're more dominant and I'm going to make you shift less and I'm going to make the other things shift more because I think since you're loud in the mix, things should shift to you. You should not be shifting to things. Does everyone understand that philosophy? Does that make sense? That's how, see, Pi, everybody's in the pool splashing around. And this is this is going to make all the waves phase nicely. So Pi says, "Hey, it can't be a complete free fall. I I I want the dominant elements to shift less, and I want the quieter and less dominant elements to shift more. So that's why I want to be post fader because if the kick drum's turned way up relative to everything else, is the kick drum going to shift more?" Or are the other elements going to shift more and the kick drum's going to shift less? Correct, right? Exactly. The other ones. So this is a very, exactly. So this is a very intelligent way of prioritizing who's going to be phase shifting to please who in this relationship. Now, if you have, if your DAW, so, you know, Cubase has a post fader insert. Uh, capability. But Logic does... How many people here are in Logic? Okay, a couple. So we love Logic. Um, and so they what they did was they created a way that you can use Pi just the way Pi wants to be used without having a post fader insert. So what it is, is uh, channel weight. So if you put it on your regular insert, you can then drive the channel gain without disturbing the way Pi is seeing things and then adjust the priority by your channel weight. So this is the fine tuning knob for saying, make, I'm a bigger kid in the pool. I'm a smaller kid in the pool. Now, true. If I add more weight priority, I think priority is a maybe the right word. It's, I think it's weight. Um, is it? Pri yeah, we'll get. We'll work on that. If I give the channel more weight, um, planetary influence that I like, then what it's saying is this is the same as having it as a post fader insert with the fader turned up. It's saying this is a dominant element. Shift it less and make other things shift more. Okay. And then once you get that sweet spot the way you like it, you can then use your channel gain as a fader because this gain is post pi. So that's your workaround for logic people. Okay. And you can also turn your group gain up and down if you love your relative balances um, once you create groups. Okay. So let's let's keep walking through here a little bit. You are encouraged to create groups that should be relating to each other. So if we go here to the manual for those who read manuals, which I do, he they they show a little bit of a way of grouping things, one logical way to group things in the manual. So you could have a drum group and you would make that channel one or group one, your kick, your snare, your hi-hat, your toms, your overheads, they, would all, they could all be a drums group. Then if you had a bunch of different, you know, like uh, two bass, different micings and a DI from the amp, two different micings of the amp and a DI, you could make a bass group. And if you had three different recordings of different guitars, you could have a guitar group and then you could, if you had things that you thought were not going to relate to anything, you can leave them outside and not pie them. It is not uh, illegal or it is not, it is recommended that sometimes you experiment with having 
a couple elements in your mix not have any pot. But for those who saw the lecture, he said, yeah, but sometimes I take a vocal and I put pie on it and it, it plays nice with the whole mix in a really wonderful sort of unpredictable way. So this is where it's the art and the science. Here's the science. But then the art is up to you a little bit how you want to play with your pie. Now, once you group, you know, you make your groups according to you, these groups, they, they double pie. They, they pie themselves and then they pie with each other. It's pretty deep, right? So um, no, you cannot throw pie on the whole mix. I'm glad you asked. Pie doesn't know what to do. Doesn't know what to do. Can you use pie on a complex bus with lots of different elements, like 18 background vocals? Will pie work on a bus with lots of elements? No, no. Mm -mm. Pi doesn't like mixed buses and Pi doesn't like buses. You know, two very similar guitars, you might get away with it, but Pi likes individual things. Exactly. And we'll talk about grouping, we'll get there. So you have some options um, when it comes to how you want Pi to deal with your groups. And I'll show you how I made my groups on this simple demonstration. You can have pie um, just, you can have pie uh, turn it off. If you want to see what your group sounds like unpied, this is how you bypass your pie group. Then you can have your group phase locked for mid side recordings or different recordings where they, you want them to be phase locked, but you want those phase locked elements to then pie with your whole mix, you would choose phase locked. Then you can also have your pie just pie your group, opt up phase, when I say pie, I mean do phase optimization with your group, but not uh, reference the entire mix. Or as Nir said, 99.9% .9 of the time, you want it all. You want pie to optimize the group, but also also optimize the mix. So this is our sort of the, the go-to default one. Now down here, this is global. So this is like anything global, it's for all pi. This is not, it's not a group setting, even though it's on the group side. You can have pi optimize all the frequencies of the group and the mix, or you can tell pi just optimize everything from 800 hertz and down, 800, so that it's really optimizing the low frequencies and not having not working as hard over 800 hertz. As we said before, this phase management is all about the groove. It's all about the fullness and the groove and not making things be hollow and weak. Once we move into the mids above 800 or whatever, some kind of phase lack of correlation creates a lot of width. So you can choose. Now, Nier, the co-designer, I called him the designer a couple of times and he got mad. He was like, I'm the co-designer. Okay, the co-designer, too humble, uh, said he likes full range, not low frequency. He said, that yeah, low, fre low frequency exists and you can try it, but full range is cool because it's just cool. <laughs> and, you know, um, sometimes it brings together more of the power of Pi. Okay. So now if you have, uh, this is a global bypass and this will turn everything that has Pi on it on or off so that you can bypass Pi everything that is pied, and let's bring up a second pie. Here's my other post fader insert. So this one is here. Let's go back here, open up this one. So you can see there's, these are two elements in this little demo mix um, that are to the same group. But even if they were not, if you see, if I bypass the global on one, let me get this out of the way so you can see. You can see that they follow. Can you see that? 
So this is your, do I like Pi on this or do I like my settings or not thing? If you want to bypass a group from Pi, you would click over here. And since they're on the same group, you can see that they both shut off. If you're like, do I like what Pi is doing on this group? This is where you would bypass it. And if you want to bypass uh, what Pi is doing on an individual element, you'll bypass it with your soft bypass here. Okay, so does everyone get that? So um, all instances of the plugin in separate tracks are always in communication with one another. Yes. Unless, yes, Kevin, unless you shut it off and you say, just pie the group, but don't, don't relate the group to the mix. You can shut that off. To learn more about our online music production classes, please visit nextlevelsound.com home to the modern music producer.